everyone. Uh, today, uh, we are starting now our webinar. Uh, remember that our webinars, they all they occur every two weeks, always on, on Fridays at 5 p.m. Brazilian time. Today, we are very happy to, to, to have uh, our special guest from Germany, Britta Hood. Hi, Britta. Hi, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Sure, thank you for having me. Uh, Britta uh, is a PhD student and junior economist at IFO Institute at the, and, and, uh, and she is also from the University of Munich since 2018. She is also a short-term consultant at the World Bank since 2019. Her work interests are education economics, gender economics, and migration economics. She was also a research fellow at the Regional Academy on the United States together with UNHCR in 2020 and a research mentor in, in 2022. Brita has lived and worked in Argentina, oh, Colombia, Paraguay, Spain, and Sweden. Do you speak <laughs> Spanish? Yes, yes. Oh sure. my God, we could speak Spanish. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> claro. <laughs> I, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, maybe, how do they say? Portulenio? Uh, uh, yeah, something like this. <laughs> uh, how do you say? Po um, Portuñol. Ah, yeah. Portuñol, yes. Yeah, yeah, Portuñol, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, Brita, uh, feel free to to begin your yes. presentation. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Let me start. Okay, so today I'm going to present um, our paper, Twitter and Crime, the effect of social movements on gender-based violence. And this is joint work with uh, Ilfo Kaupinen, who is also actually here. <laughs> Hi, Ilfo. I already saw you. <laughs> and uh, with Michele Battisti from University of uh, Glasgow. And um, before entering into the details of the paper, um, to give a little bit of a big picture, what this paper tries to answer is how we can change harmful gender norms, um, and especially with respect to gender-based violence. So um, if you look at uh, the levels of gender-based violence worldwide, um, actually data from the UN shows that one out of three women experience gender-based violence along their lifetime. And um, we define gender-based violence uh, according to the to UN women, which means that we look at violence, which is physical, sexual, or emotional, based on gender. So that means that it can occur actually also against men, but it has to be related to gender. And this type of violence can take place in the public or in the private spaces. And um, there is an emerging literature now, which is actually kind of exploding at the moment, looking at um, gender norms or social norms in general, and also looking at harmful gender norms. Um, and it is actually, until today, not clear how to effect effectively address gender-based violence. So there are some studies on gender-based violence, like, for example, work by Amarel et al. Um, they look at um, yeah, if, uh, introducing female police officers reduces uh, the level of gender-based violence, or also work um, yeah, on, uh, on poverty programs, if that's somehow related to gender-based violence, but it's not clear yet what is actually working. And we can even go broader when we think about social norms. So I'm putting here a picture on uh, Venezuela because um, there were actually huge demonstrations, uh, as you might well know, in 2019, people taking the streets and trying to change harmful social norms, in this uh, case with respect to corruption, but in poverty. 
Or on the right, you can see a picture about the famous uh, I Can't Breathe movement, which took place in the US in 2020, which was related to harmful norms related to racism. And related to that, there is then a literature looking at, um, for example, political protests, if they are effective um, to change harmful social norms. But um, yeah, it's also not clear yet when social movements actually work and when they do not work. And so that's a big bit the big picture. Um, how can we change social norms? And more concretely speaking, we look at if we can leverage online platforms to social norms, uh, to change social norms. And then in this case, it's of course then Twitter. And um, our outcome variable is the gender-based violence related crime rate. And our explanatory variable are online social movements against gender-based violence. So what we do is to analyze if um, there is an interaction between what happens online and between what happens offline. And as I already detailed a bit in the introduction, this then contributes to the literature on gender-based violence, social movements, political protests, but also technological change. Can, can I ask you something? Yes. Uh, so in, in this, when you, in your study, you're including, for example, racism crimes or uh, no, we only look at gender based violence okay yeah that was just to expand a bit the relevance you know that there are now a lot of movements and so on taking place um but yeah in our case we look at gender based violence and so now let's take an example and so i don't know if you remember this uh <laughs> Harvey Weinstein scandal, which took place in 2017, and which, um, yeah, uh, was about uh, Harvey Weinstein in Hollywood uh, sexually arresting a number of people, and then people started to come forward, and this uh, gained quite some public attention. And um, let's imagine a world without um, Twitter then maybe people would have sit in front of uh, their television or um, in their kitchen discussing this, but there was no way to actually express this um, publicly on such a yeah, great scale as it then happened uh, thanks to Twitter because people started to actually tweet a lot about that and uh, then expressed their outrage, so to say, about these acts um, publicly and very visibly on Twitter. And um, this is then why we asked like, okay, are these online platforms uh, actually signaling opinions, beliefs, and social norms? And um, is there networking which can make things big to change, to drive social change? And what we do in the paper is to generate a new data set which measures social movements on gender-based violence on Twitter. And uh, we do this via the Twitter Full Archive API, which is uh, accessible for academic researchers. And we generate a hashtag-based approach for our data set. So I explain to you later how we do that. And also uh, assign locations to the tweets but we only focused on the US and we do this analysis at the federal states level. And then we match this data set to crime data on gender-based violence from the FBI. So the FBI collects data on a crime and it's accessible publicly also. And we then match both data sets at the weak federal state level. And our empirical strategy relies mainly on um, high frequency regression. So our uh, analysis is, as I said, at the weak level. So we take advantage of the high frequency. And also we conduct an event study given that um, the movements start always very quickly and then fade out quickly also. And um, we also look at mechanisms to see if uh, our results are actually driven by reporting or by crime perpetration. And we do that via Google Trends data as well as sexist Twitter movements. And um, we also analyze if, if the polarity of what, what is written plays a role. So uh, maybe 
things that are more extreme have a more extreme impact. Um, so we do that via a sentiment analysis of the text. And we also do a face recognition exercise where we analyze the profile picture of Twitter users to investigate the demographic characteristics of the people tweeting and to check if they are similar to the victims of gender-based violence. And we then find that uh, there is a decrease in gender-based violence-related crimes by approximately 1% when compared to the mean. And the effect is actually largest for sexual violence. So we later, I'll show you later, we divide by sexual, physical, and emotional violence. And then we see that the effect is largest for sexual violence. And uh, our findings are also pointed towards um, perpetrators changing their behavior. So they commit these crimes less instead of victims reporting crimes less. And uh, we also find that the polarization actually does not play a role. It is uh, actually the pure magnitude of the movement that impacts gender-based violence-related uh, crime rates. And then uh, we also find some limited evidence on that the police also increases uh, arrests. So they arrest people committing gender-based violence-related crimes more frequently. And we show that actually um, Twitter users that tweet as part of the debate are mainly female, white, and young, and therefore also very similar to the victims of gender-based violence. Okay, so now I will explain everything in more detail. So first, um, how do we create our Twitter data set? So here we ask ourselves the questions, okay, how can we generate a data set which reflects very well the conversation on gender-based violence on Twitter. And um, because you cannot extract just all tweets from Twitter, right? That would be too much data. So you have to somehow filter the data. And we do that uh, via a hashtag-based approach, which is inspired by computational science. So there are some papers uh, in computational science doing this kind of analysis. Um, and we started by 10 of the largest social movements on gender-based violence on Twitter, such as Me Too, for example, and then collected all hashtags which were used uh, within these movements. And then we made uh, a list of these hashtags and ordered them by frequency, so how often was each hashtag used. And then we told, um, we, we actually designed a machine learning classifier, uh, which then told us, okay, this hashtag is related to gender-based violence, or this hashtag is not, not related to gender-based violence. Because, for example, as part of the Me Too debate, many people also used hashtags which are actually not related to gender-based violence, like, for example, hashtag Hollywood. Right, because the Weinstein scandal took place in Hollywood, so many people used hashtag Hollywood. But standing on its own hashtag Hollywood does not identify all tweets related to gender-based violence, right? And so then through this, we generated a list of 2009 hashtags, which uniquely identify gender-based violence-related topics. And then um, we chose the 62 hashtags, which um, were mostly used, because there's also a parallel limit on, on the Twitter API. So you have to somehow uh, decide which hashtags to use, and we used the ones that were most relevant. And then we also... Uh, uh, can I ask you something? What is tw yes. Twitter API? Um, it's uh, like um, an interface by Twitter. It's provided by Twitter. And through um, this, you can access the data set. So um, yeah, they, it's like an, yeah, a computer interface um, through which you can filter data without seeing all of the data. So yeah. And um, then we, yeah, decide, we um, also extract the location of each tweet by uh, using the user's location. Um, and then, yeah, we here I show you the number of tweets per um, internet users uh, in the US at the federal state level. So there is some geographic variation, but yeah, it's not 
so homogeneous as one might maybe expect. Um, but yeah, for example, in New York, uh, in, in the state of New York, you have a lot of trees and so on. So yeah, it's, it's uh, a bit uh, as you would expect, I think. And then- um, so done, as, very, very quickly. Yes. So you, you go quite a big back in time. I don't know when you collected this, but I think the API has, uh, API has some limitations on the, the number of tweets you can retrieve. So yes. does that worry you? Uh, you can extract 150,000 tweets in 15 minutes. And you can extract in total 2 million tweets per month. Yeah, but I guess, I mean, if, if, um, if someone tweets a lot, I think you cannot retrieve all the tweets from that account, right? If, if that would have happened, say, in 2014 and an account tweeted a lot of tweets, right? You cannot retrieve all the tweets back in time, right? So that, I guess, would um, skew your data to, towards uh, people that tweet relatively less. So this doesn't work via um, users. It, it retrieves the tweets at the tweet level, and it just retrieves all tweets um, that use the certain hashtag. So uh, for day one, it retrieves all tweets using hashtag me too. For day two, it uh, retrieves all using um, hashtag me too, and so on. So it's not about the users, it's about um, all tweets using this hashtag. I understand. So you, you, you can retrieve all the tweets that use that hashtag, yes. even if it's far, farther back in time. And the time you decide on the time. So we use 2014 to 2016, but you could even go back uh, in time. But we decided to focus on these three years because um, the FBI data was only available until 2017. And yeah, we didn't want to go much farther back than 2013. So I think three years is okay. You know, it's at the weekly level. Yeah. Mm, I understand. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, so we start with simple regression. So this is our outcome variable. It's then the crime um, rate, the gender-based violence-related crime rate. This is the explanatory variable, which is the Twitter tweet rate. And then we also consider the Twitter tweet rate in the previous week and the Twitter tweet rate um, of two weeks earlier. And we do this because we think that people do not react immediately to what they observe on Twitter, but they take some time. So that's why we said, okay, well, let's also. Sorry, can I make a quick question? Yes. So this crime rate is based on police reports. How do you measure this? Because I saw that it was FBI, FBI but I, I don't know what measure is, is from police uh -huh. report. How do you retrieve? Yes, retrieve? it's um, police. That's the ones made to the police. Yeah. Okay, so, so um, it's not perfect, but yeah, it's what we have. So of course, you, that's you have of... like because here in Brazil we have an issue that the states it differs a lot the the, the strategy like to to put okay the, this crime is a gender based violence. I don't know how how is it on the United States if you have this in all states you have the same measure you have the same methodology to to define these crimes because here in brazil it's a really important issue actually it's done by the fbi so they have the unified questionnaire and then the um agencies they have to fill it out so it's uh, the same questionnaire for all uh, states yeah okay thank you um, and then with respect to the fixed effects, we um, include month of the year fixed effects um, and then state fixed effects. And we cluster the standard errors at the month uh, state level. And then we also uh, do spatial regressions because of course social media, you know, the <laughs> mechanisms might not be um, like 100% geographically because you have also friends from other areas in the world or other states. So you also see things posted somewhere else. 
And that's why we say, okay, let's also include spatial spillover effects um, to account also for potentially confounding factors at the geographic uh, level. And yeah, that's uh, the, the spatial regressions. And then lastly, as I said, um, we also have the event study where we include um, 21 pretreatment periods because um, yeah, we, we go back until the first um, point of observation in our data, which is uh, the first day of 2014. And uh, we consider then one specific movement, which is the Yes All Women movement, which started um, in week 21 of 2014, and that's then our event time. And we include then one year after the start of the event in our regression um, to see if it changes like long term or if, if it's a short term thing. And yeah, we do the event study at the federal state week level also like the main regressions. And um, what we do is to artificially <laughs> generate actually events because um, there is this event, yes, all women, and it spreads differently across federal states. And um, we say, okay, the event nationally started um, in week 21, but it varied at the federal state level. And as soon as a federal state level appears in the upper third of, um, tweet, of the tweet rate, then uh, the then that's when the movement actually started um, to be big in that respective federal state. Um, so it's a bit artificially, but yeah, it's um, it's the best you can do in that case. And um, so now the results. So as I said, we find like a one percent uh, significant effect. Um, interestingly, as you include the legs, uh, the significance goes down like with time. So here we only have the contemporaneous Twitter tweets and uh, the effect is then significant in the same week. But when we also include like the Twitter tweet, uh, tweets from last week, we um, see that actually then this effect is negative. And when we include it from two weeks ago, then this effect is um, then significant, right? So how we interpret this is to say, okay, people actually take time, you know, to, to process what they see online and then based on that adjust their behavior. Um, so yeah, it's not, and also of course this could be correlated over time, right? Um, because yeah, the movements are of course correlated uh, and that could also drive that. And um, then the spatial regressions, we don't include um, time lags, we only include spatial lags. And interesting, interestingly, what we find is that the direct effect actually is um, insignificant, but the indirect effect is then significant. And then the overall effect is then also significant. So, okay, this confirms our findings, but still it's a bit um, surprising that the direct effect is actually insignificant. So that's something to have in mind. And then the event study um, looks like this. So this is the pretreatment uh, period and that's the treatment period. And so first of all, you can see that there is a drop in the crime reporting rate. Um, it seems to take some time, which is in line with, uh, with our main uh, findings from the regression and there is no treatment trend but this is a bit noisy uh, here the the pre-treatment period the crime rate okay then how do we interpret our findings so for this we actually use the theory of crime model by becker et al which is an economic model to, uh, to understand criminal behavior so it's like a typical cost benefit approach he says, okay, you engage in criminal behavior um, depending on the costs and benefits of this, um, of this crime. Um, so I don't know, and they also depend then on your individual characteristics. So if you are a gang member, um, the benefits and costs differ from um, somebody, I don't know, normal, uh, with normal ethical standards. Um, and what we say is that the social movements on Twitter, they actually increase the costs 
because they are like peer pressure, you know, like you see, okay, um, society is not in line with what I do anymore, first of all. And then also they are neighborhood effects, meaning that you see other people being socially prosecu prosecuted on Twitter. And then you say, okay, I don't want to be that person. I'm going to not commit these crimes because I don't want to experience this social pro prosecution on social media. And this then changes um, the offender behavior and perpetrators refrain from committing these crimes. And um, now, of course, there could be alternative explanations for that, right? So we now said, okay, we are looking at the change, change in perpetrator's behavior, but actually there could also be a change in victim's behavior. And um, th then you would need to think, okay, but the effect is negative. So what can, why can it be negative, right? Um, so one explanation is that there is a replacement of, in, of formal by informal networks. And that's actually something um, that would be explained by uh, victims going on social media and like putting out their uh, yeah, frustration and they, their feelings about what they have experienced. And then they get support and they see that other people have experienced similar things. And then you may not have the urge to go to the police anymore. Then uh, you can also say, okay, there might be a backlash, which explains this negative effect, because maybe in response to these social movements, perpetrators actually engage more in these crimes. And then they uh, intimidate their victims even more, and then they report the crimes even less, right? Um, that would be another channel. And another possibility is that there's stricter law enforcement by the police, which then also increases the social costs and also other costs of committing gender-based violence-related crimes. So we investigate. So, Brita? Yes. Yes. You you are using crime reports, so this might be pretty serious, you know, offenses, right? So another possibility is that that there's some substitution so people are not committing you know the, the harshest mm -hmm. things but maybe there's an increase on psychological violence etc right so um I, I was thinking uh you could use some other data maybe on 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 hotlines calls mm -hmm. to, to hotlines you, that's hard to collect in the us because i think it's pretty decentralized it's not that the like the fbi crime reports right but maybe you can do a case study um in, in some city or um, yeah you're using state so maybe in some state um to see mm -hmm. whether you know this there's a decrease in in calls which be could be a, a much better proxy for for the incidence of yes. uh, of violence right because the, yes. the report i mean you you have to be willing to to go and report that's true yeah so the crime reporting data is of course uh, always a problem in the crime literature, but that's a good um, idea to look at uh, the phone calls. Um, so what we actually do, I can show you now, um, but we do it differently. So we say, okay, are the people Googling more for informal support networks, right? Like National Domestic Violence Hotline, for example. Um, and then the impact, um, so, and this is from Google searches, uh, so this you can also retrieve, um, like, publicly, it's accessible. And there we don't find, we do not find a significant effect, so actually, yeah, this seems to not be the case that um, there is some change in, in that for, for at least. And um, for the backlash, we look actually at a backlash Twitter social movement which uh, are all tweets using the hashtag alpha male. So alpha male, um, so I just searched for uh, most sexist hashtags. And then uh, one of them was, for example, alpha male. So under al hashtag alpha male, many people share like, I don't know how, how big of a man they are or, or stuff like that. So it's like um, conservative gender norms. And we use that to say, okay, all these tweets are actually um, movements um, reinforcing conservative gender norms. And uh, what we would expect to see then if there is a backlash 
is like a, a decrease, right? Because that would, of course, intimidate victims. But we do not see that. We see a positive effect. So that would, again, foster our hypothesis of um, perpetrators changing their behavior. And um, then, of course, what is often done in this literature is to look at violent crimes. So instead of looking at gender-based violence related crimes, we only look at the violent crimes related to gender-based violence. That means femicides. And also, um, uh, I forgot the name, but um, when there is like a relationship of dependency involved. Um, so for example, a mentally ill person who needs like to be taken care of somebody else, if there's gender-based violence um, involved, this is a separate category in the FBI data. Um, and yeah, we investigate this and there is a decrease. Um, so that also shows that there is uh, perpetrators involved changing their behavior. And um, then we also look at the police. So we check, okay, what happens with the police to arrest relative to committed crimes or reported crimes go up. And we do not really find evidence on that, right? So you have here a slight um, positive effect, but it's very limited and it's not the case for the other coefficients. So there might be something, something but it's not a strong confirmation of that law enforcement increases. So this would mean that the police actually does not feel pressured in the same way by what they observe on Twitter as perpetrators. And um, then we additionally look at the role of a stigma and tabooing because uh, gender-based violence involves a lot of stigmatization and shaming. So people do not really report these crimes because they feel ashamed and they yeah, often experience victim blaming afterwards. So that's why we say, okay, we also want to look at that. And how we do this is to check if the results differ for sexual, physical, and emotional gender-based violence. And we find that relative to the mean, the effect is largest for sexual violence. So this could mean that actually, okay, social stigma and tabooing play a role because the, the relative effects differ, right? So um, that's a, a way to approach this, but maybe yeah, there are better uh, ways to do that, but that's, uh, yeah, at least to get a hint of it. And then, um, okay, now we come to the text, right? Because we have now this huge data set and we have also all the text of the tweets. So what do people write? So that's why we say, okay, let's take advantage of that and let's uh, check if the polarity of pe what people write plays a role. And for this, we do text analysis and we use the VADA sentiment analysis tool. It was programmed by somebody else, not by me. And it was uh, trained on social media data and it, this tool detects the polarity and the intensity of sentiments of written text. And it also takes into account like uh, word order sensitive relationships, so the meaning of text. And the, what comes out of this analysis is the compound sentiment score, which ranges from minus one to one. Minus one being very negative uh, sentiments and one being very positive sentiments. Zero would be neutral. And it also gives you the fraction of text which is positive, neutral, or negative. And to show this to you with an example. So here we have, uh, for example, hashtag me too is great and the smiley, and that would then be a sentiment score of 0 0.7506. And then we have gender-based violence is horrible and horrible is written in, in normal uh, cases. And then it's minus 0 0.8225. But if horrible is written in capital letters, then it's more extreme, right? So the score is higher. And if you put like really horrible, then it's in between of the other two. So that's how the tool works. It takes, so that's why it's so great because it's made for social media. So it also works on smileys, on these capital differences, and also like 
um, stuff like a slang, like ug or ah, or this kind of thing. So that also, it, the tool can also interpret that. And then we do this for uh, but, our but so, Sorry, sorry, Brita, but, but they, they can go together, right? I can, I can say me too is great and also gender-based violence is horrible. Yes. Kind of translated uh, for all of it. So I don't know. Maybe then it would be something like, yeah, I would need to try it out. What comes out of it? But as I said, the tool also takes into account like word or a sensitive relationships. Um, but yeah, I I don't know if it then puts zero or zero or like the average of this. I would need to to actually include an example on that to know. <laughs> yeah. But, but like, yeah, I would ask the same question that, that Francisco and like a tweet that's saying report is good, you, you must report. This would be a positive one because go, yeah. goes in the same direction that gender based violence is horrible, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's mainly based on these um, words like horrible, good, and so on. So that's driving that a little bit. Um, but yeah. still, I think it's uh yeah it, it, it's more about extreme ends you know this is how you have to see this like uh, if extreme tweets like i don't know um uh oh my god this uh sexist guy how horrible and so on if this is like, then more successful in driving a gender based violence then um yeah something more neutral you know so but yeah it's of course not perfect i agree um, okay, so then we uh, do this for, at the federal state level, and here you can see the average compound score for the period 2014 to 2016. And um, yeah, it varies uh, a lot at the federal state level, and uh, overall the, the, the compound score is actually negative, so it's uh, below zero. So feelings are more negative than positive, which is also what one would expect, of course. Um, but when we then run the regression of the compound score on the gender-based violence-related uh, crime rate, we do not see a significant effect. And from this, we conclude, OK, it's actually more about the magnitude of the social movements and not about the content of the social movements which again somehow um, confirms our hypothesis on the pressure, right? Like the social pressure. And then, um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, there's also criticism actually, for example, on hashtag me too, um, where actually people said, okay, it's not inclusive. It's only like for white women um, and it's not for, um, other ethnicities. And that's why we um, somehow check this to see, okay, how inclusive is this movement actually on Twitter? And here we do, as I said, a face detection analysis. Um, and uh, so just to show you here an example of the Twitter profile picture of Michelle Obama. Uh, so if you run the algorithm over it, in this picture, Michelle Obama would be female, black, and 37 years old. So that's something you have to have in mind. I noticed that many people put <laughs> profile pictures on Twitter where they are actually younger <laughs> than they might be nowadays. Uh, so yeah, then it's uh, of course a bit sco skewed towards uh, also, being also faculty websites. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's um, actually institutional. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, on faculty websites, it's the same. There's actually a meme about that somewhere, I think. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, when we do this, we find that the people are mainly who post are mainly female, so it's actually um, as expected, and they are mainly white. So if you compare it to the average population uh, in the US, it's actually a larger share. Um, so that shows a bit. Okay, people are actually so this these movements were a bit. Um, less inclusive than they should have been when you consider the entire population of the US. Um, and then we do like um, one robustness check. So we run a placebo regression because 
we want to see if there is a confounding factor, like um, something happening at the same time, which drives Twitter and crimes. I don't know, something like an election, for example, where people get angry and then also tweet a lot, but then they are also angry and then they um, commit more crimes. Uh, and I think there's also a paper on actually football games having the same effect. So this is why we do this. And uh, we use as an outcome variable non-gender-based related crimes. And uh, we see no significant, significant effect. So that would then confirm our, our uh, research design, at least with respect to confounding factors affecting crimes and tweets in general. And uh, now to conclude, so we find a negative impact um, pointing towards a decrease in actual gender-based violence. And this holds for sexual, physical, and emotional gender-based violence, but it is largest for uh, sexual violence. And uh, this would then be in line with the economic rationale on crime that um, this is actually an increase in perceived costs through social punishment and also um, neighborhood effects. And what we can learn from that is that um, online social movements indeed lead to offline behavioral changes. And that actually social media platforms could serve for interventions to address harmful gender norms. And also our paper, of course, stresses the importance of social networks as key drivers to social change. And the other way around, this is also worrisome because if you think about conservative movements on Twitter, also with, with, with respect to gender, um, then of course <laughs> the question is, okay, can this then also lead to a backlash, right, with respect to gender equality? And therefore we should be like concerned about it and actually try to mitigate these kinds of conservative movements on, on um, social media. So yeah, I think uh, that's it. Thank you very much. And if yeah, you have more questions or comments, I'm happy to, to take them. Paulo? Brida, when you talk about uh, social norm, social norm is the long run effect, basically male social norm. In your case, are you testing the information impact on the violent crime, because yeah, you work in short run period, okay, is very different. How um, do you respond about this critic? <laughs> so yeah, um, I think what uh, so how you how we interpret is, is to say it's not like a change in social norms. It's a signaling of social norms because through twitter when a lot of people for example in the me too movement posted on twitter about gender-based violence they signaled that this is not acceptable and through this they signaled a gender norm right that gender-based violence is unacceptable and that's how we like frame it you know we don't say oh this now changes the social norms but more, okay, people like um, signal social norms on social media through these movements. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, Francisco. Thanks, I, I, I enjoyed your, your talk and I think it could, couldn't be you know, more in time, given what we're living now in economics, the, the <laughs> yeah. movement in economics. And, and actually have a sort of related question to that. Um, I'm, I'm still struggling to, to try to understand uh, the, the empirical model and, and, and the mechanism, because I, I, why, why should we think that, you know, tweets uh, in a given state can have an impact in that in that state, right? If I think 
especially thinking again of the Me Too in economics movement, right? So this is happening in somewhere else and yeah. we all know what's happening and it's impacting all of us, right? So so I'm I'm kind of worried worried about that. I am trying to 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 to, to understand that. Um, that's that's one comment. I I have something else. Ah yeah. So um, I, I would I would re-emphasize the issue of 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 the that that you're looking at at crime reports and and uh, you know uh, so so when you when you mention that the effect is a reduction in 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 you know in violence I would be careful just to mention so this is a reduction in 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 crime reporting and, uh -huh. and I think I, I I I would I would definitely push towards looking at other data sets and trying to. Um, trying to understand if this is a, an actual decrease in violence and violence is going down or there or there's some substitution in, in terms of types of violence or mm -hmm. it's sexual violence that is um you know it, it, it's going down or it could also be the the backlash i think it's still too early to rule out backlash um i would also push to towards i may, maybe i i i, I skip that uh, the um, do some placebo exercises like would would you would you see this having an impact on on other things i i guess that there might be some issues that you some some outcomes that you can think of that uh -huh. it's unlikely to see an impact and and try to to run that to to convince us that this is happening you know, um, this this movement is actually affecting you know gender based violence. Um, uh -huh. Ah, sorry, and just going back to my first point on 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 the issue of uh, you know something happening in a particular state, you know, tweets in a particular state having an an, an impact on 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 the outcome. This could be the media, right? So this could be um, you know the movement starts and it's taken up by the media. And then the media is reporting it, and that's how you know perpetrators get informed, and thus there's, there's a reduction, right? So I, how how could I, and, and this is a question I don't really have very good suggestions on that, but uh, I guess it's going to be hard to disentangle it from just you know the movement being captured by the media, except for the fact that you have local media. So maybe what one could do is to try to use uh, local news. Uh -huh. and, and uh, to try to disentangle the the more overall effect from the you know more local effect so yes. yeah, those are my 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 comments and suggestions <laughs> all, it, it was super interesting and thanks yeah thank you very good comments actually so of course with the um a level of analysis that's a big point uh, and that's why i also said from the beginning that's a uh, problematic so we try to account for it via the spillover effects, right? To say like, oh, okay, but you also see stuff uh, happening in other federal states and so on, but maybe where you are, it happens first. And actually that's also why we use the period 2014 to 2016, because back then Twitter was still a bit more local as it's right now, right? Um, it wasn't that international and also in general digitalization was a bit less advanced uh, than now um, but still yeah I think at least as a robustness check it would be good to do some other form of um, analysis like I was thinking about age groups for example maybe um, certain age groups they are not on Twitter you know and then you can somehow exploit that um, to say okay uh, to as a robustness check you know um, to say, okay, uh, the gender-based violence reported uh, crimes by older people, uh, what happened to that, right? Um, then the second point was yeah, on, on crime reports. Um, yeah, I think at some point I was looking into service, service on gender-based violence because there is one in the US, but it's only representative at, at the national level. So that's a big uh, problem. It's not representative at the federal state level. Um, but yeah, maybe with the Google searches, something like that could also help. Or phone data, I also tried to get it from an NGO, but they always say they will send it. And now one year, one year later, they have still not send it, but all the time say that they send it. So hopefully one day they will send it, but I don't know. Um, and yeah, placebo, thinking about additional outcomes. Yeah, I can think about some 
other placebo regressions uh, to, to be more convincing. And the last one was on the media. Ah, yeah, this is the point we have it also in the paper. So I think, you know, we don't say that the media doesn't play a role. That's why we always say it's just like about the signaling, you know, okay, people signal something on Twitter, then the media comes and picks it up. But we don't, this is not a problem for us because we don't say this is Twitter, you know, we say like Twitter is like a platform to facilit facil facilitate these um the signaling of these opinions and so on and to make things big you know um and then the media also takes it up uh, because of that also right so um yeah um still it would be good to have media data and and somehow control for it or something like that i, th I think that would also help actually so that's also a good point thank you Maybe amplify the 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 fact. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Are there more questions? No. I just want to to add something. Uh, following Paulo and a little bit uh, Francisco. Uh, uh, Paulo was uh, talking about this kind of the social norms is a long-term thing and that Twitter is more informational. And uh, like, uh, I, I think it's well established that social norm is like one of the main causes of, about uh, gender inequalities and like in your talk it was really uh, great and uh, this uh, topic is really congrats about your your study and and that uh, like uh, uh, from all these movements and uh, the the way that uh, twitter uh, uh, affects with the the social norms. I think this is what you wanted to, to stress and actually your results show it something like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Paulo was worried with this, like this short-term thing with the Twitter informational and the uh, long-term social norms. I think that Twitter at least is like the start of this thing, you know, like, and, and at least uh, has uh, the beginning of the link to change of the social norms. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, your last, uh, and, and it has something to do with uh, policy things uh, that, uh, that change social norms that is so difficult to change, like, yes. and it, it's, it's a slow thing to change. But your last bullet, you put something that uh, the all oh, the way around, like uh, that uh, it's uh, that I didn't follow that much. That uh, uh, there's some dangerous thing that uh, we have to worry about the Twitter thing. Yeah, like you have a policy, a great public policy thing, and the Twitter movement i think that we have to worry then we are all over the world here in brazil especially in this moment that uh, we have to take care really about the the twitter and the media and all this thing is that what you wanted to mean with this last bullet right and yeah that's, that's, um, that's, uh, that's the other way around you know like people uh, treating like about harmful gender norms and if um, that then has a lot of visibility then that's also worrisome and I, I and i think that has uh to do with the media area i mean i mean like the subject or like the communication area the different advertising like uh, besides the economic area or econometric area you know it's like something that we really have to study because yeah. uh, uh, yes, so if you not you do not follow, and if you do don't don't know, and if you don't have a tweet like uh, as I did, like 
couple of years ago you like outside of the world you know like uh, like our last uh, before last governor of Rio like won the elections like uh, for me what's I think for a lot of people here in Rio State was a really surprise we mm -hmm. didn't know we didn't know like most of uh, people like in the when he won like who is this guy you know like and <laughs> I'm wondering if it's like it was a Twitter movement <laughs> and like, you know, like, and it's happening. So it's, it can, it's it can yeah. happen. I think there's also one paper about the effect of uh, President Trump's tweets. And, yes. um, <laughs> and they also found like significant effects. Um, I don't remember yeah. what they look at, but yeah, it's of course. <laughs> And I, was, <laughs> and I was so surprised that now that during this election I'm I'm all the way around I'm like following I, I'm kind of with this Twitter illness thing <laughs> yes <laughs> but right but a uh, really really great talk and study congrats thank you very much thank you Brita Congratulations. It's a really Rita, nice paper you, and really Rita, actual. Do you have a working now. paper about the, the search? Yes, yes. I so have... actually, um, I think so I sent it uh, to Lorena, I think, the paper. OK. Um, and so I think the working paper version will be on like our website, like the EFO website on Monday or something like this. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. I try to find your one. web page. But I uh, yes, I, I, yes, I still don't have it on my web page, but on Monday for sure. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, I thank you very much, Brita, uh, for your presentation. Late hour. Late <laughs> hour. <laughs> and, and the topic's very interesting. Go to sleep now or have a while. <laughs> ah, Yes, well, so mine, it's good. It's Friday. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for all your comments and for listening. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, maybe we see each other in Brazil. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye, you. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> bye, -bye.